good morning student today we'll be discussing about the important lecture called gingival curettage so this lecture will be basically a part of the discussion and we'll also be demonstrating you a live case so basically the objective of this case is to discuss the various kind of indications contraindications advantage disadvantage of gingival curettage then we'll be discussing what is the basic difference between universal and gracie curate we'll be also discussing various kind of basic techniques and their procedures and then we'll be talking in detail about the various healing events that takes place post curettage we'll be also demonstrating the students a basic clinical procedure through video so talking about the content of this lecture it comprises of the classification of gingival curettage rationale historical perspective indications and contraindications the difference between universal and gracie curate basic technique and procedures excisional new attachment procedures caustic drugs healing events post curettage so basically talking about curettage curettage has been uh, derived from a latin word known as curette and curette basically signifies to cure or to care so uh, if we trace back the historical perspective of curettage some bronze curette has been found in primitive egyptian tombs as well so it dates back to that uh, primitive era so basically talking about different definitions of curettage there had been various definitions given by different author so as per one definition given by nestor and lopez the term gingival curettage implies directing an operative instruments against the gingival wall of the periodontal pocket in order to remove the ulcerated epithelium covering the sulcus if we talk about the caranza 10th edition definition the word curettage is used to in periodontics to mean the scraping out of the gingival wall of the periodontal pocket to separate the diseased soft tissue lining so basically what very changes takes place when inflammation happens and separative gingivitis happens so uh, first of all once the connective tissue is inflamed the sulcular epithelium becomes ulcerated and there is immense proliferation of the connective tissue this in turn result in formation of something what we known as granulation tissue you will if uh, when you will come to the clinics you will be able to appreciate the patient in which inflammation gingival inflammation is there pocket is there and then uh, when the different kind of perio procedure when we start up with this the granulation tissue comes out so basically this granulation tissue is nothing but it is ulcerated and hyperproliferative connective tissue so basically the objective of any periodontal treatment is to remove all the irritants all the inflammations and then facilitate the circumstances where the fibrous connective tissue will be remodeled and then in turn it, what will it will do that removal of the chronic inflammation tissue with the aid of gingival curettage and that will enhance the periodontal remodeling process so coming to the definitive terminology gingival curettage is basically as we have already discussed it is removal of the inflamed soft tissue lateral to the pocket wall if we talk about the sub gingival curettage it is procedure that is performed a pical to the epithelial attachment severing the connective tissue attachment down to the osseous crest there's something known as inadvertent curettage 
and this in in adverent curatage we tend to do it every time when we are doing scaling and root planing so whenever we are performing scaling and root planing there is some degree of curatage which is taking place unintentionally so that very phenomena is designated as inadvertent curatage so basically talking about the rationale the whole rationale of this procedure it is like uh, we are trying to accomplish the removal of the chronically inflamed granulation tissue that forms the lateral wall of the pocket and barrier to the attachment of the new fibers with the means of root planing the various pocket pathological changes which are present over there they get resolved so curatage may also eliminate all or most of the epithelium that lines the pocket wall and underlying junctional epithelium talking about the historical uh, aspect of uh, gingival curatage first of all in 1902 zamnesky was the one who published the classic alveolar pyria its pathological anatomy and radical treatment and uh, what he has found that the infiltration with wbcs were not very deep at it and it embraces almost exclusively to the papillary layer of the gum so what he did that he treated pyria with removal of the calculus and he was the first person who basically performed deep curatage of the sockets using using cocaine anesthesia then followed by him there was uh, robeskis so he was the first person who developed a surgical technique consisting of scalloping continuous gingivectomy incision excision exposing the marginal bone for the subsequent curatage and remodeling then cronfeld was the person who proved that bone in the periodontal pockets was neither necrotic nor infected but rather destroyed by the inflammatory process and era of the tissue curatage began as the tension was shifted to the soft tissue surrounding the bone as the source of the infection so basically it's not a pathological change of the bone per se but the real thing the real culprit is the surrounding soft tissue lining and then followed by that there had been uh, many changes and uh, then eventually radical treatment was supported by a few authors such as newman widman robeskis sizanki nordine etc so it was first goldman who has uh, basically discussed the rationale of curatage and differentiated the, between those designed for elimination of the gingival pocket he stated that a cure can be accomplished when the disease epithelial lining and attachment and the altered gingival corium are eliminated and he later observed that the soft tissue curatage with the help of ultrasonic instruments and its healing consequences so basically talking about various indications and contraindications of gingival curatage it can be used where edematous and inflamed tissues are present in case of shallow pockets supra bony pockets as a part of preparation to open surgical procedure in an attempt to achieve tissue quality that can be handled easily let's say you are planning for a perioplastic procedure or a periodontal flap surgery procedure and the tissue over there is pretty inflamed you are doing scaling and root planing still the condition is not getting resolved so in those condition you can very well start your gingival curatage procedure followed by your scaling and root planing then it can be done where progressive attachment or alveolar bone loss is there and definitely it's a very uh, proven procedure in order to bring down the bacterial load now talking about the various contraindications it cannot be used in the case of fibrotic tissue deep pockets are basically they are indicated for your periodontal flap surgery procedure so the pockets which are extending beyond your mucogingival junction we cannot do gingival curatage over there 
And then for cation involvement is basically indicated more for your periodontal regenerative uh, procedures where you can use your different kind of bone grafts, GTR membranes and also you cannot do curettage over there. And certain medically compromised patient where since it's a minor surgical procedure, if you are having certain kind of like blood disorders, the patient is on some kind of blood thinner, in such patients, it, uh, maybe if the patient is uncontrolled diabetic, so in such patients, it becomes very difficult to perform subgingival curettage. So uh, first of all, the basic instrument, periodontal instrument that we make use in doing uh, gingival curettage procedure is your curates. So we'll be discussing about what is universal curate and what is area specific curate, alternatively known as Gracie curates. So basically, uh, a universal curate is a periodontal instrument that is used to remove small and medium-sized calculus deposits from the crown and roots of the teeth. It is basically used universal, universally in the entire mouth. That is, the single instrument can be used uh, anteriorly, posteriorly, and hence the name is universal curate. It can also be used supragingively as well as subgingively. The various kind of example are Barnhart curates and your Columbia curates. Whereas area specific curates, these are basically meant, meant to remove light calculus deposits from the crown and roots of the teeth. And it signifies that each instrument is designed for that particular teeth and even the a certain aspect of a particular tooth. So in this, we have basically one cutting edge per working edge, and this working, uh, this cutting edge is only used for the periodontal debridement. There are various kind of Gracie curate. They are numbered from uh, basically the conventional uh, Gracie curate. They have been numbered from one, two, to 13, 14. So based upon like starting from your anteriors, incisors, to your premolars, canine, then uh, facial surface of your molars, your mesial aspect of your molars, and distal aspect of uh, the molars, they have been designated as different numbers. So now we'll be discussing about the basic technique of the curatage. So as we have discussed, the basic instrument, either you can use your Gracie curate or universal curate. First of all, the first step is to isolate that area and then anesthetize it adequately. Though for uh, your curatage procedure, you need not give your uh, block as we do in uh, flap surgery procedure, local infiltration or topical local anesthesia is sufficient enough. Then your sharp, you should be like very much uh, like your instrument must be very sharp enough. And this sharp Gracie or universal curate is inserted with the cutting edge against the tissue so as to engage the inner lining of the pocket wall and junctional epithelium. So after this, this curate, as you can see in the picture, is carried along the soft tissue in a horizontal stroke. Meanwhile, before starting this procedure, you will be supporting this pocket wall with the help of gentle finger pressure. Basically, we use non-working hands thumb in order to support the external surface of your pocket wall. And then it is followed by several overlapping strokes, which are used to completely remove the epithelium and underlying, underlying granulation tissue. When all the granulation tissue has been removed from the pocket lining and the fresh bleeding happen, then you are supposed to irrigate that area in order to remove debris and press the tissue to the tooth surface gently, which enables the arrest of the bleeding. And it will also facilitate the adaptation of the soft tissue to the root surface. 
if at all you feel that uh, your papilla has been dis disrupted or it has been separated, you can very well give your interrupted suture in that area. And healing will take place in the form of shrunken, firm, well-adapted and well-contoured tissue. So this was your conventional gingival curettage procedure. Now we'll be discussing about the excisional new attachment procedure. So basically it's a form of the gingival curettage procedure, but it, in this we go more radical. It is performed with the help of knife. So the objective is to permit thorough soft tissue preparation, secure better access to the root surface area, and the advantage over your subgingival curettage is that it is quite definitive. You can you are able to give very clean incision to the gingival junctional epithelium and the subjacent the subjacent tissue with a greater probability of your new clinical attachment, which is basically objective of all possible periodontal procedure. So talking about the historical aspect of the excisional new attachment procedure, it was first given by Kirkland in 1931, who has described it as a modified flap operation for treating periodontal diseases. And uh, it was Birkin in 1939, he described it as a conservative surgical approach to treat periodontal pockets. And uh, this Birkin's procedure was closely uh, approximated with the INAP procedure, which was reported by Yukna in 1976. So when we talk about the exclusive indications of excisional new attachment procedures, it is done in the case of supra bony pockets, just like your subgenital curettage. You have to ensure that there is adequate keratinized tissue over there and it is done in this area since we are giving excision over there. You are excising the tissue. So it should be done in those areas where aesthetic is not that important. You cannot perform excisional new attachment procedure where pockets exceed your mucogingival junction, where there is presence of edematous tissue. You cannot do it this procedure where there is lack of your keratinized tissue. Keratinized tissue, that means your marginal gingiva plus attached gingiva. If it is not adequate enough, you cannot go for the inner procedure. Osseous defect must be treated prior hand. If you're doing inner procedure, then if at all there is hyperplastic tissue, the roots of molars are very closely uh, placed Furcation involvement is present with the help of, uh, with, the, with respect of molars or probing depth is more than 3 mm, you cannot go for the excisional new attachment procedure. So talking about the various advantage of INAP, it basically, since you're giving excision over there, it improved the root visualization, complete removal of the sulcular epithelium and uh, epithelial attachment can be achieved. It leads to minimal gingival trauma because you are giving a very sharp, clear excision and excising the tissue very neatly and there is no loss of keratinized gingiva. However, it is quite difficult to determine the apical extent of the epithelial attachment and it does not result in new attachment. So talking about the procedure, the various instruments which we use in excisional new attachment procedure is your surgical handle, Bart Parker number three, surgical blades number 11, 12, 15, and your curates. So first of all, before, prior to starting of your INAP procedure, you'll be doing very thorough scaling and root planing at least one week before you're planning for INAP. And you will be ensuring that the uh, healing has been like achieved, prompt healing has been achieved post your scaling and root training procedure. Now, when you start, when you think that the scaling and root planning has been done adequately, after a week, you'll be recalling the patient and then adequate anesthesia is given after which the pockets are checked to ensure the zone of the keratinized tissue because here you have to ensure the adequacy of your 
keratinized mucosa and the pocket should be supra bony it should not be exceeding your mucogingival junction so talking about the incision which you will be giving you can appreciate it in the diagram as well with the help of blade number 11 and 15 a scalloped partial thickness inverse swivel incision is given from the crest of the gingiva to the base of the sulcus the incisions are carried out in facial lingual and interproximal area as far as possible then this papilla is thin interproximally to remove any possible inflamed connective tissue and the triangular wedge of the interproximal tissue this tissue is difficult to remove once the flap is removed so you'll be thinning it prior hand only and then with the help of your scalers and curate you'll be removing out the inflamed granulation tissue and excising the remaining tissue any kind of tissue tag which is remaining over there that is also removed very carefully you can use your castor weasel scissor in order to remove the tissue tag and then the root of the tooth is scaled until the hard and smooth surface is uh, uh, like it is obtained and uh, the surface should be totally free of calculus and any kind of altered cementum then as like your uh, subgingival curettage you will be flushing that area with the normal sun line in order to remove the debris blood clots and tissue tags and then you can since you are giving incision over here you can give the interproximal sutures which are used to position the tissue as closely as possible to the pre surgical height and to adapt the papilla and tissue tightly about the neck of the teeth and what you are basically uh, striving to attain is your primary closure the close approximation of the tissue and then as per your requirement you can give periodontal dressing or periodontal pack it's totally up to you because some people some clinicians they prefer periodontal uh, dressing some people may not now this is one uh, modification of ina procedure so basically in 1977 freddy and rosenfeld they modified the technique by advocating a partial thickness reverse inverse bevel incision down to the crest of the bone to completely remove the tissue about the periodontal ligament so in this basically we are actually using a inverse bevel incision and then flaps were then suture at the pre surgical height and technique is basically same in other aspects so as you can appreciate in the picture an initial uh, incision which is like uh, targeting your crest of the bone and like in case of inap we basically go till the base of the pocket and here you are going till the crest of the bone and you are giving an in inverse bevel incision then you are removing the entire inner wall to the crest of the bone and periodontal spaces and as you can appreciate in third picture this is your heel tissue earlier we used to make use of certain drugs certain chemicals in order to uh, do the subgingival curettage procedure uh, which like uh, they were used to they were recommended in order to induce a chemical curettage of the lateral wall of the pocket or even the selective elimination of the epithelium these drugs were basically sodium sulfide alkaline sodium hypochlorite solution which is also known as antiformin and phenol but later because you cannot actually predict the extent of the tissue destruction with the aid of these drugs and you cannot control it they were discarded and their effectiveness was like questionable so they were like uh, totally they are not used anymore another way of performing uh, 
curettage procedure is by the means of your ultrasonic curettes. So the use of the ultrasonic devices has been recommended for the gingival curettage. When applied to the gingiva of experimental animals, ultrasonic vibration disrupts the tissue continuity. It lifts off the epithelium, dismember the collagen bundle, and it alters the morphological features of the fibroblast nuclei. It is quite an effective way for debriding the epithelial lining of the periodontal pocket and it results in narrow band, band of the necrotic tissue. This phenomena is known as microquarterization. It basically strips off the inner lining of the pocket and uh, various kind of ultrasonic devices such as your more scalar shaped and rod shaped ultrasonic instruments are used for this purpose. Uh, there is this uh, clinician called Nadler. He basically in 1962, he found that ultrasonic instruments are as effective as your manual instruments or your curate, different kind of curates for the curatage, but resulted in less inflammation and less removal of the underlying connective tissue. So talking about the different procedure, different uh, kind of healing sequence, which takes place after your curatage procedure, is first of all, a blood clot fo is formed in the area. And this uh, hemorrhage is also present in the tissue with the dilated capillaries and PMNs. And this result in the proliferation of the granulation tissue. After two to seven days, you will be observing that there is restoration and epithelization of the sulcus. And post five days, your junctional epithelium is also restored. In 21 days span, like about three weeks time, even immature collagen fibers, they start appearing. So basically several investigators, they have reported in different kind of humans and animal studies that uh, curatage in long term as a healing uh, consequence, it results in formation of the long thin junctional epithelium with no new connective tissue attachment. Whereas in some cases, a long epithelium is interrupted by windows of connective tissue attachment. This is known as long healing by long junctional epithelium. So basically what very changes happen in the clinical appearance is that after one week, you will see that gingiva appears reduced in height owing to an apical shift in the position of the gingival margin. The gingiva also uh, is slightly redder than normal because different kind of uh, inflammatory and proliferative changes are taking place post the treatment, but much less than the previous days. Then after two weeks, you will see that the normal color consistency, surface texture, contour of the gingiva are, they are regained and the gingival margin is well adapted to the tooth. So basically there was a study which has been carried out for the purpose of, of observing the different wound healing process and the behavior of the blood vessels when curettage was performed. So uh, this Title of the study is Visualization of Microvascularization of the Healing Periodontal Wound Followed by Curatage. So basically in this pelican carbon black suspension was filtered and it was injected in the common carotid arteries of some young adult dogs. And then the perfusion technique was basically performed on days 2, 4, 6, 7, 12, 16, 23, 31, 38, 55 and 85 days. So basically they observed different kind of change. In first zero hour, they found that the circular epithelium, epithelium attachment and connective tissue, they were removed entirely. And hemorrhagic and perfused material, it was flowing out of the vessels. So beyond the epithelial detachment, the connective tissue was sometimes torn off from overcuritment. And when the tissue was torn, the perfused material flowed into the sulcus. More vascularization was seen and there was some hemorrhaging. The capillary loops in the retipeg area were easily observed. 
due to the perfusion with the carbon black. And till now, no inflammatory cells were present in the sulcus area. Now, after two days, what happens is that the blood clot, it covers the entire sulcular area and there are no epithelial cells from the tip of the margin of the cementum and enamel junction. The underlying connective tissue area is still disorganized and the connective tissue surface derived from the hand curettage is irregular, but is corrected by the blood clot, which presents an even to give rise to the blood uh, clot formation as demonstrated by the continuity between the carbon black and the clot. On day 4, uh, the whole area has a thick blood clot and there was a hemorrhagic uh, hemorrhage deep in the connective tissue which was basically caused by the instrumentation. After this, gradually the beginning of the epithelial proliferation takes place which migrates underneath the claw and the subcircular connective tissue is still remains disorganized by till now. On day six what happens that the epithelium already covers the cut surface of the connective tissue and it is quite thin and fragile in this uh, duration being just form of average of around five layers of flat epithelial cells and the connective tissue is healed and there is no apparent inflammatory infiltrate. A large number of loaded small capillaries also present beneath the sulcular epithelium. At the cemental enamel junction, the bottom of the long epithelial attachment and the insertion of group 3 fibers can be seen forming a well collagenated area and group 1 fibers is still remains, it still remains disorganized. On day six, newly formed epithelium is still thin, as you can appreciate in the picture, and subcircular vessels contain perfused material, which we have injected in order to see the different changes. On day seven, what happens that uh, the epithelialization is completely achieved as far as the cementum, uh, cemento enamel junction, and the epithelium is thin but irregular, and there are some epithelial projections over there. Many desquamated cells and debris can be seen in the sulcular area in which the, there is inflammatory response present. Now, on day 12, the sulcular epithelium remains thick and it is located at the cementum enamel junction. Keratinize, is, keratinization is present at the margin where the sulcular and oral epithelium join. So there's no inflammatory uh, infiltrate into a connective tissue, which underlies the new formed sulcular epithelium. It is quite well collagenated and group one fibers as well as the sub uh, capillaries, they start showing some kind of organization by now. On 16th day, the sulcular epithelium remains at the cemento enamel junction. It is thin, there are no red apex, there is flattening of the cells against the enamel, forming the cuticle which identifies the bottom of the new sulcus. The connective tissue is well organized now, by now and very little vascularization and without inflammatory infiltrate. Now group 1 fibers are not as distinguish, distinguishable by this age. By day 23, now everything is has like the organization has been like completed and uh, now the characteristic characteristic of normalities are regained and very little vascularization is seen beneath the circular epithelium on 31 days there's no significant difference from day 23 specimen and just like circular epithelium now it starts appearing a bit thicker and noticeable and there is increase in vascularization in the gingival marginal area. On 38 day, they, the sulcus again remains normal as we have seen before and there is no inflammation and connective tissue is now well collagenated and very few ves uh, fewer vessels can be observed there than in control since there is no inflammatory reaction taking place. Now, as you can see, the whole summary of the healing event in a clinical photograph 
You can see that first of all, there was gingival inflammation, the surface uh, texture was lost, there was edema present over there, the color of gingiva became bright red, there was uh, even uh, pocket uh, depth uh, when we like assessed it with the help, uh, aid of your calibrated periodontal probe, it was more than 3 mm and uh, it was quite uh, edematous kind of soft kind of uh, gingival consistency the gingival was having so basically uh, we did gingival curettage procedure especially in area distal to your 1-1 immediately post operative changes was that there was enhanced uh, inflammation in that area different kind of inflammatory mediators were present in that area the re-epithelization procedure, the, re, uh, the uh, collagen fibers organization, they all started taking place. And uh, as you can see, the result after around a month, the whole normalcy of the gingiva in terms of your uh, surface texture, consistency, and uh, contour, everything has been regained and even the color has become normal which is pale pink in color so basically objective of subgingival curettage is placement of curate at, uh, is uh, used to shrink the pockets and to promote the reattachment procedure and this may lead to the regrowth of the bone which results in reduction of the pocket depth and also elimination of the pockets However, there have been different studies and they have uh, like tried to assess the added advantage of gingival curettage over uh, just SRP or scaling root planing procedure. So what they have found that removal versus non-removal of the granulation tissue during flap surgery and non-surgical therapy uh, that has been found by Linde and Nyman. And the results fail to show any kind of added advantage in the granulation tissue removal if we do flap surgery procedure or we do non-surgical procedure. The one I was talking to you about that gingival curettage, if at all, if it is done uh, added to your scaling and wood planing procedure. So there was one study which was done by Kefisi et al. in 1981. So they have uh, basically concluded there is no uh, added advantage in the initial healing response over the SRP alone. So the various methods used for the epithelial removal show that they have no advantage over the mechanical instrumentation with the help of curates. Therefore, gingival curate by whatever method performed should be considered as a procedure that has no additional benefit to SRP alone in treatment of chronic periodontitis. There's a procedure known as laser assisted new attachment procedure. So this is basically laser assisted curatage and we basically uh, prefer using your NDAG or Erbium YAG laser because it is found to be safe in animal studies and it has got an advantage of inducing new cementum formation after the pocket ir irradiation. So basically the concept was given by Greg and McCarthy in 1989 and it got FDA clearance in 2004. Basically we use free running pulsed NDAG laser for this and the outcome is your new connective tissue attachment and apparent periodontal regeneration. So basically it is like segregated into two sections. First is in uh, first procedure, first of all, you will be probing in that area and you will be uh, finding the excessive pocket depth. So this area post your uh, SRP, the laser radiation is done in order to vaporize that area of the dis disease tissue lining and the setting for this is around 4 watt and energy density is 180 to 200 millijoule per pulse. If at all any kind of bone modification is also required, we'll be doing that bone modification simultaneously. 
then after doing this procedure we'll be doing something known as second pass so in second pass what we are trying to achieve is basically formation of a blood clot so in this uh, like uh, in second pass procedure basically we'll be putting the uh, tip of the laser as a pickle as the, as possible to the base of the pocket in order to induce the blood clot formation and this blood clot formation only will be helping in reattachment of the retirich to cl clean root surface area and uh, this will basically lead to a gingival crest uh, formation by a closed system after this procedure if at all any kind of malocclusion or occlusion trauma is present this needs to be adjusted and the ultimate result is your new attachment regeneration however by uh, the reports of american academy of periodontology they have concluded that no justifiable application during active therapy of the chronic adult periodontitis can be achieved by curettage procedure and it is basically a procedure which provide historic interest in the evolution of the periodontal therapy but has got no current clinical relevance in the treatment of chronic periodontitis so basically to conclude it is a surgical procedure designed to remove the soft tissue lining of the periodontal pocket with a curet leaving only a gingival connective tissue lining it is originally conceived and was designed to promote new connective tissue attachment to the tooth by the removal of the pocket lining and junctional epithelium however as per the american dental association there is no added therapeutic benefit uh, in the treatment of chronic periodontitis and even american academy of periodontology also approves so so however it can be attempted as a part of periodontal treatment where flap surgery is relatively contraindicated or difficult to attempt so basically uh, you can go through this chapter through your carenza 11th edition and there have been many questions which have been asked in uh, ccs university the long question which was asked in october 2014 is a uh, def definition of the curettage and about its indication the different technique of subgingival curettage and short notes have been asked about uh, gingival curettage as a short note of four marks and difference between your universal and area specific curettes so basically uh, there are certain multiple choice question so who among these is credited for the excisional new attachment procedure the answer is yukna which amongst these is equivalent to unintentional curettage that we have already discussed in advertent curettage and which among these is not a chemical used for the chem chemical curettage procedure the answer is formocrisol so this is basically a live case demonstration which we have done in our department uh, it was done in i think in month of uh, last may and this patient he was a 49 year old male patient he reported to our department with the chief complaint of uh, gingival swelling and uh, even food enlargement and uh, the scaling and root planing procedure has been done around two two three sessions two sessions of scaling followed by one session of root planing and uh, before starting the curettage procedure we will be basically we basically check for uh, so that any calculus and debris that was not present in the area it is where we are planning to do gingival curettage
Now, basically, uh, as we know that uh, if periodontal pocket depth it becomes more than three mm, so it becomes a pathological condition known as periodontal pocket. So, with the help of uh, the calibrated periodontal probe, when we check for the pocket, distal to your one two, a pocket depth of five mm was found. As you can see, this was a perfect place where we can attempt for the gingival curettage procedure because when we check for the pocket in the in uh, further posterior regions with respect to premolars and molars, the pocket was quite deeper. So these areas basically we'll be dealing with the help of periodontal flap procedures. So first of all, we'll be administrating local anesthesia and before that, uh, we can also give topical uh, anesthesia because topical anesthesia, anyhow, it is a very patient friendly thing that will bring down the patient apprehension and numb that uh, surrounding soft tissue area. So that even when you will give, be giving your local infiltration, patient will be quite comfortable with the procedure you're doing. After giving the topical anesthesia, we'll be uh, proceeding with your local infiltration. So at the mucobuccal fold, Basically, you'll be penetrating your needle tip. You'll be aspirating it. If at all, no positive aspiration will be found. Very gently, you'll be injecting 0.5 ml of your local anesthesia. The procedure of anesthesia should be very uh, like carefully done. It should be like gradual and you should not be like inserting the tip very deep or injecting the anesthesia very quickly. Likewise, since we are planning to do the curettage procedure both on facial as well as the parental uh, interproximal area, we'll be giving the parental local infiltration as well. So we'll be inserting a needle at the near above the root apices of the tooth concern and uh, re-aspirate and if no positive aspiration will be found, we will be injecting 0.5 ml of the local anesthesia in this area. Now we will be making you acquainted with different kind of curates. So curettes are basically, uh, they are not, uh, they are periodontal instruments which are meant for the curettage procedure only. And they, as you can appreciate the working end, it is not as sharp as a scalar, but it is more of a rectangular, if you see the tip design, it is more of a rectangular shape. So basically this one which I am using right now, it is a universal curette, which has a round toe and back and has got two cutting edge for your scaling and curettage procedure. And uh, this is closely adapted when the toe is directed interproximally and the terminal shan should be kept as parallel to the tooth as possible. And to remove the deposit, the cutting edge is applied to the tooth surface and the facial surface of the blade is tilted towards the tooth to achieve a 70 to 85 degree of angulation between the tooth and the blade. And before starting the procedure, you'll be applying a gentle lateral pressure over there. And as you can appreciate, I'm giving repetitive strokes, repetitive gentle strokes. As you can see that uh, with the help of my non-working hand, I've secured the base of the pocket. The thumb is securing the base of the pocket. And 
and these uh, repetitive horizontal strokes are given in order to remove the granulation tissue, debris and the pocket wall. You can clearly appreciate the different strokes which is given in the repetitive motion and in order to remove the base of the pocket a scooping motion is given with the help of the curates only. First of all when you will be starting with the procedure there will be granulation tissue which will be coming out. Granulation tissue as we have already discussed this is basically your remnant of uh, your disease uh, ground substance, your pocket epithelium, remnant of the microorganisms etc. The debris. So the main idea behind the periodontal uh, regenerative surgery is to remove the disease pocket line. So that's basically what we are doing over here. It's very important to achieve a clean, clear surgical feel over there. So you'll be cleaning the area repetitively with the help of a cotton or a gauze. The initial bleeding will be much darker because uh, that is like that denotes for the inflammatory procedure process which is taking over here there. So it will be much darker and as you will be like proceeding the bleeding will become much lighter in color that will be basically denoting the completion of your successful completion of your gingival curatage procedure. As we have already discussed, this procedure could be done in cases of your supra bony shallow pockets area only. If at all your pocket is involving uh, some kind of furcation involvement is there or if it is an infra bony pocket or maybe some kind of bone defect is there, there you, will not, you would not be doing your gingival curatage procedure. Patient selection becomes very important in order to achieve a good result. Since it's a minor surgical procedure, even you will be like uh, if patient is like a debilitated patient or having different kind of medical complications, those patients also are not chosen for gingival curatage procedure. Some, if the patient is having some kind of blood disorder or if the patient is uncontrolled diabetic, we'll be ensuring that we'll be taking care of the systemic condition first. We'll be referring the patient to the general physician after the condition gets resolved then only you can proceed with the gingival curatage procedure. As you can see the working end of the instrument in contrary to the scaling procedure your conventional scaling and root procedure, no, root planing procedure where the tip of the working end is kept towards the tooth surface. Here we are keeping it away from the tooth surface, like towards the soft tissue line. So this remains the basic difference between your scaling, root planing and gingival curatage procedure because objective is to remove the lateral wall of the pocket or soft tissue lining which is inflamed. Now almost 
we can see that we are towards the completion of the procedure you can very well appreciate the granulation tissue and soft tissue granulation tissue and uh, which is coming out so after removing it you can see the fresh bleeding which is coming out which is much lighter in color and even if you'll see the towards the uh, if you'll appreciate the attached gingiva the bluish tinge has started you know getting visible indicating the completion of the procedure and now we'll be doing the final irrigation final irrigation is done in order to remove all kind of debris uh, the various like uh, granulation tissue remnants which has not been able to be removed completely with the instrument so basically we are using over here one part of betadine and three part of normal saline we are bending the needle in order to ensure the forceful proper forceful irrigation to the area targeted so as you can see we do very nice forceful irrigation in the area we have done our uh, gingival curettage procedure and this is basically the completion of the curettage procedure